Hey everyone, April Dunham here. I'm back at you for another Template Tuesday video. This week I'm going to show my Desk Reservation Power Apps template. This was actually a request from one of my YouTube subscribers, so shout out to her for requesting this. And thank you for everyone for all of your comments on my videos. This particular template is really relevant for today's times when we're trying to figure out ways to go back to the office but also maintain social distancing. So with offices running at limited capacity, some kind of reservation system will really help that process. I'll walk you through the app and we'll learn a few things about nested and complex filter functions and a lot of design tips and tricks. But first, here's the intro. I've optimized the app for the mobile client. There's three main screens of the application. The first landing screen is the dashboard. This is where you'll receive a welcome message and see your top two upcoming reservations. You can click on my appointments and see additional appointments. So this will show all of the appointments that you've booked upcoming. And then you can also click previous and see your history of appointments. And if we go to the book tab, You'll be taken to a screen where you can select the date that you want to book. Now this is designed to be able to book one day at a time for certain hours of the day. So I'm restricting it from typical work hours of eight to five. Let's select a day. Maybe I only want a desk for half a day. So we'll do 12 to five and click continue. Now this is going to take us to the screen where we need to select a desk. So it's confirming the times that we have selected and it's showing us any desk that are available. I've given these some generic names for now, but we have a name and then a description of the desk about kind of where it's located. And then if you click this information icon, you could even embed a visual of the layout of the office so you can kind of see where the desk might be located. Just click the checkbox next to the desk that you want. And this is obviously only filtering desks that are available and don't have existing reservations during this time. Click continue. You'll have a confirmation screen just to make sure that you have the details ironed out. Click confirm. It's booked, you get a success message and that will automatically redirect you back to your dashboard screen. And now I can see that my desk reservation is showing up here. And now let's go in, I'll just, just to prove to you that it is actually filtering the results so you can't double book. Let's go back in and try to book something for the 15th from 12 to five. You see when we do that, um, desk two is missing. So I can only select one of the other desks because there is a current reservation for that. Let's break this apart a bit. One of the things I really tried to focus on on this app is the design. Really wanted to make it look not like power apps and, and very user friendly. So we're using some images for backgrounds instead of just plain solid colors. One quick tip for a website that I like to go to to get free stock royalty free images to use on my power apps is a website called Pexels. They have a ton of background photos and really photos of almost anything. That's where I've got all the photos that I'm using in the application. Then I'm using my favorite control in power apps, the HTML control to create this nice hover rounded background border. So I'm really just kind of using that for the background and I'm not injecting any information in it. I'm going to overlay information on top of it. So it's just a simple line of HTML with a div that has a gray border and I'm using a border radius to give it some rounded corners and setting the height and width and a background color. To give us some contrast on the screens, I changed the fill of the screen itself to kind of a shade of gray. So there's some variation between the HTML div that we have in the background of the app. And overlaid on top of this, I'm just using a gallery, which I've applied some styling on to pull on the month, date, desk that's reserved and the time. But one of the things I said we'll learn in this is about some, a little bit more complex filtering. For this gallery that's showing up for the dashboard, I wanted it to show just the top two upcoming reservations for the current logged in user. So let's take a look at the filter query that we needed to make that happen. First thing you'll notice is we're using the first in function. 
And that's what enables us to restrict the amount of results that are returned. So you wrap your filter query within the first in, and then at the end, you can pass it in the total number of items that you want to return. So you see, that's why I have a two right there. Then within that, I'm using the sort by columns because I want to get these in descending order by the checkout from date. So for sort by columns, you pass it in your data source, the column name that you want to sort by in quotes, and then the order ascending or descending that you want to sort. And within that, we are using a filter in the desk reservations SharePoint list in this case. And we'll just take a quick look at our SharePoint list. It's pretty simple. We just have a title field where I'm storing the name of the person that reserved the desk and the desk name. We have a separate column for the desk name, the person that reserved it, check out from and check out to. So we kept it really simple. First filter we're doing is we're getting the reserved by dot email because that is a person or group field. So we need to get a property off of that. And I have a global variable that is being set in the app on start to store the current logged in users information. So I'm going to compare that to that current user dot email. And then I'm going to take that checkout from, so the start date of the reservation in our SharePoint list and only return the results that are greater than or equal to today. Now let's take a look at the formulas that I'm doing to get the month and the date from the checkout from field. We'll look at the month name first. I'm using a function called upper to convert the result to all uppercase letters. And within that, I'm using the text function, passing in our checkout from date field from our data source. And I'm using the in quotes MMM functionality to get the month short name. So if I were to go in here and add one extra M, so four M's total, that would give me the full name of the month whereas three gives you the abbreviated name. And two gives you the numeric value. So those are the three different options to get the month from a date. And for the date itself, using that same upper function, text again, using that checkout from, and just using the DD shortcut to get the date. If you do three Ds on this, that will give you the day of the week in short code that this is, and four Ds gives you the full spelled out day of the week, so Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And finally, for the hours, we're using that same text function, and there's a property that you can use called date time format, and there's all these different formats that we can get from that. So I'm using the short time option to extract the time from our SharePoint date field. So you can do things like just get the, uh, the long date if you want. So that will give you the day of the week, month, day, year. But if you just want to get the time from a date field, then use the short time option. The appointments page is really similar. The gallery is doing all the same filtering, except we're just not doing the first in. In this case, we're getting everything. But what I'm doing here is I'm doing a tabbed approach. If you want to know more about tabs, I do have a video on that showing exactly how to implement tabs, which I'll put a link to in the video notes. On the date selection field, I'm utilizing a calendar component, which allows me to select a given day. Then I've just put in two drop down boxes, which I've hard coded with values of 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on each. And on this continue button, I'm utilizing some global variables using the set command to get the information so that we can use this in other screens. So I'm setting a global variable called selected date to the selected date from my calendar component. For the start time, since I'm not using a date time control, I'm utilizing a component and then drop downs, I need to format this into a valid date time value so that we can patch this correctly. So to do that, we can use the date time value function use the text function within that to pass it in a selected date and then format it with the short date function from our date time format. Then just do an ampersand so that we can add something to that and make sure you put between your date and your time a space. So that's what we're doing here. We just have two quotes, an open and a close, and then a empty space within the middle. Then do another ampersand and then we can use the time value function to take the time from the dropdown and convert that to a valid time value. We're doing that for start time and we're also doing that for end time. And then we just navigate to the next screen. 
on the desk select screen, this is where some nested kind of complex filtering is going on. And I'm going to throw this out there because I'm sure you're going to notice it. This template does have some delegation issues. For this to really work the way that I intended, I had to use the not function. And that unfortunately is not a delegable function um, in SharePoint with the way I want to use it. But I really don't think this would be too big of a problem because for this reservation system, I don't believe you really need to keep past reservations at all or not for that long, maybe a day or two tops. So what I would suggest if you're in a high volume situation is have a scheduled flow that runs every day and archives your reservations off or deletes them if you're comfortable with that so that that keeps the main reservations list under 2000 items. With that out of the way, let's take a look at this filter function. So in the back end, I have our reservations, but I also have a different list for desk. I'm going to store in the desk name, description, and a map link in this list. So I only want to return the desk that don't have a reservation in the reservations list for the given time that the user selected. And to make that happen, I'm filtering my desk list. And within that, I'm having another filter. So I'm saying I want to filter the desk items where the title, which is the desk name, is not in this other nested filter. So then I'm filtering our reservations list and I'm going to compare the checkout from date, see if it's greater than or equal to the start time that I've selected, and if the checkout to is less than or equal to the end time. Then I'm going to do an or to get the checkout from, see if it's less than or equal to the end time, and the checkout to is greater than or equal to the end time. And in the not, we're going to do a dot to get the desk text. So we're going to compare on that field. So if there are no results in here, that'll be blank and it's only going to show the desks that don't match. I've just put in a checkbox control within the gallery so that the user can select which desk they want. And on its on check property, I'm setting a global variable that will hold the selected desk. The last piece of this is a tab component that I'm you see at the bottom of every one of these screens. So if we come over here, you see I just have a simple component. It's just a gallery control within the component. And for the items, we just have a table where we're giving it a name, an associated icon, and a page that it should navigate to. This allows for a consistent look and feel across all of my screens with this component. And here's a look at that calendar component that we're using in the app as well. It's a little bit more complex. It's two galleries to store one to store the day of the week and another to store the days, and some labels and icons to handle navigating through the different months. The beauty of this particular template is it can be used for any kind of reservations, not just desk. This can be used by a hair salon, or maybe in a school setting to book time with a college advisor, book a conference room, lots of different options for this particular template. If you have any other ideas for templates you'd like to see, Please use the comments section of my channel and drop me a note. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.